morning all of you last class we discuss about fitness matrix and show function and assignment for understanding assignment i am taking a little bar here so in this class we will discuss about small problem on understanding assignment that is stepped bar showing a problem on stepped bar here Yeah. First of all, we are presenting on finite element method using unit two, namely one dimensional element. Okay. Here it is the problem. Calculate the stresses in each element using finite element equation. So the problem is on. Stepped bar. Okay, stepped bar is related to one-dimensional element. Here I am showing a problem on one-dimensional bar element. But here, one first one, second one, and third one. Three elements are there, and different types of areas and uh, areas are denoted by a one, a two, a three. And next, e one, e two, e three are the Young's modulus. For different elements, that is E1, E2, E3. Here, we given areas. E1 is 2400, E2 is 1200, E3 is 600. Next, E1 is 80, E2 is 70, E3 is 90. Next, E2 is Giga Pascals GPS. Next, alpha one, alpha two, alpha three are the thermal diffusivities. Alpha is denoted by thermal diffusivities. First one, first element is related to bronze. Second element is aluminium, and third one is the steel. Here, the lengths for different elements. First one is 800 mm. Second one is 600. Third one is the 900. 900 mm. Here, first of all, he uh, he also given temperature gradient. That is, delta T is the 80 degrees Celsius. So this problem is related to stepped bar, one-dimensional bar element. For solving any problem in finite element equation, first of all, we do the following steps. First of all, the step is the Discretization process. Discretization means dividing the elements into number of nodes. Here he give he given one, two, three. Three elements are there. So I am dividing the three elements into four nodes. First of all, one and second, third, fourth. One, four are fixed elements. So sorry. Not elements. One four are the fixed nodes here. So based on the problem, I am dividing the elements into four nodes. For one, it is to be clarified in element connectivity table. Step one is discretization process. Discretization means dividing the elements into number of nodes. In discretization process, including of all nodes, 
that means point load traction load surface loads loads etc here i am denoting q1 f1 q2 f2 q3 f3 q4 f4 q1 q2 q3 q4 are the unknown normal displacement f1 f2 f3 f4 are the force vectors here 800 600 third one is the 400 fourth one is unknown 400 this is not 900 400 and uh, these are the lengths for three elements next coming to second step this is the element connectivity table in element connectivity table based on the elements he given in the problem he given in the problem three elements first of all the elements can be write in left sided part so i am uh, writing and highlighted those uh, by circles 1 2 3 are the elements for one first element nodes are 1 2 for second element nodes 2 3 for third element nodes are 3 4 coming to boundary condition q1 equal to q4 equal to 0 why i am writing this equation because of q1 q4 are the fixed elements so for fixed or fixed nodes i am writing q1 q4 are the zeros this is the condition for boundary boundary after that after completion of element connectivity table and discretization process step 3 is the finding of element stiffness matrix for various elements here three elements are there three element i'm um, finding the three stiffness matrices okay first of all i am writing and finding the elements matrix for first element that is k1 the formula for finding element stiffness matrix in finite element method k equal to ae by l 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 here a means a1 e means e1 l means l1 we are finding stiffness matrix for first element so the formula is a1 e1 by l1 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 so the area for first element is 2400 plus n modulus is 83 into 83 he given in problem 83 gigapascals i am converting into 83 into 10 cube pascals next length is the 800 mm 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 so after that calculating It will be two four nine triple zero. After converting this two point four nine into ten to the power of five, this ten to the power of five, I am this ten to the power of five is taken uh, taken in the outside. Next, uh, the remaining terms will be written in matrix form. That means one minus one minus one one. So two point four nine next minus. Minus 2.49 minus 2.49 2.49. For identification, I'm writing on top side and inside that matrix. One two one two. Remember that for identification, I'm writing one two in top side and beside the matrix one two. This is the stiffness matrix for first element. Next, after that, uh, finding element stiffness matrix for first element. i am going to find second stiffness matrix for second element so applying the same procedure for similar to first element k2 is the a2 e2 by l2 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 after finding k2 equal to 10 to the power of 5 1.4 1.4 1.4 1.4 1.4 it is the stiffness matrix for second element next third element A3 E3 by L3 1 minus 1 minus 1 1. After finding K3 equal to taking 10 power 5 as common 3 minus 3 minus 3. After finding stiffness matrix for the three elements, next step is the formation of global stiffness matrix. K equal to K1 plus K2 plus K3. Next. This is the procedure for assembling of global stiffness matrix. That is, K equal to K1, K2, K3. 
here k equal to i'm taking 10 power 5 as common next here which procedure i'm using to assembling the global stiffness matrix i'm showing it to you in element stiffness matrix first of all i'm writing 1 2 1 2 for second element 2 3 2 3 for third element 3 4 3 4 let's see all of you here in top side and beside that matrix i'm also right 1 2 3 4 and 1 2 3 4 first of all we need to assemble 1 1 that means in top side 1 and beside that matrix 1 1 1 in stiffness matrix will be let's see here a stiffness matrix of element 1 1 1 is the 2.49 so that 2.49 will be written in first place that means k11 k12 k13 k4 up to k44 in k11 position i'm writing stiffness matrix for first element k11 is the 2.49 coming to in top side 2 beside matrix 1 2 1 in this matrix 2 1 is the 2.49 but minus c will be remember that negative will be taken because of the matrix in the form of 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 so minus 2.49 after that 3 1 is 3 1 is not included in the matrix because of i am writing 1 2 1 2 2 3 2 3 3 4 3 4 1 3 relation assembling of 3 1 is not there in stiffness matrices so because of that reason I am writing 3 1 is 0, 4 1 is also 0. Coming to 1 2 process, 1 2 process in stiffness matrix for first element, 1 2 is the minus 2.49. So, minus 2.49. So, after that, the problem is 2 2. Coming to 2 2 relation, for 2 2, I am writing here 2.49 plus 1.4. Why I am writing summing of 2.49, 1.4? I am showing to you. Why? Because 2 2. 2 2 is 2.49. In first stiffness, first element stiffness matrix, also there 2.49. Coming to second element, 2 2 is also there. 2.49 is one, one element stiffness matrix. Next, 2, 2 is element stiffness matrix for also second element. So, I am assembling 2.49 plus 1.4 here. Because of that reason, I am assembling and summing of 2.49 plus 1.4. Next, coming to 3 2 3 2 is minus 1.4 so this is the procedure for assembling of global stiffness matrix k equal to k1 plus k2 plus k3 after that finding of and assembling of stiffness matrices finding of stiffness matrices and assembling of global stiffness matrix that is k equal to k1 plus k2 plus k3 next step 4 is the calculation of forces forces means here Forces are body loads, traction loads, temperature loads, etc. First of all, here the forces are given body load and traction loads are option. Here only given point loads. So for that reason, I'm finding unknown nodal displacements here. Before going to find unknown nodal displacement, temperatures remember that he given only temperature delta t not temperature vectors here so for that reason i am finding temperature vectors that means theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 he will given he given only temperature gradients and thermal diffusivities alpha and beta t so for that reason i am finding temperature vectors here 
theta 1 the formula for finding temperature vectors theta equal to ae alpha delta t minus 1 1 okay ae alpha delta t minus 1 1 minus 1 1 next theta 1 is the a1 e1 alpha 1 delta t delta e similar to three elements okay ae that means a1 a1 is the area of first element 2400 e is the inch modulus for first element 83 into 10 cube. Next, alpha is the 18.9 into 10 to the power of minus 6. Coming to delta T is the 80. Temperature gradient is 80. Minus 1 1. After calculating temperature vector theta is the minus. That means 3.012 into 10 to the power of 5. Similar to Stefan's matrices, here also I am taking 10 to the power of 5 as the common. Because of matrix minus in the form of minus one one, I'm writing theta one is the ten power five minus one. That means minus three point zero one three point zero one two. Here also I'm writing one two beside that matrix because for because of identification process. Coming to theta two, a two e two alpha two delta t minus one one. A two is the area of second element one hundred. Next to E2 is the inch modulus per second element, 70 into 10 to the power of 10 cube. Next alpha alpha 2 alpha 2 is the 23 into 10 to the power of minus 6 into temperature gradient 80. It is the minus 1.54, 1.54 after finding and uh, doing all calculations. Theta 3 temperature vector for third element. E3 E3 alpha 3 delta T minus 1 1. Area of third element is 600. Next, E inch modulus is 200 into 10 to the power of 10 cube. Next, alpha will be the 11.7 into 10 to the power of minus 6 into temperature gradient. That is 80 minus 1 1. After doing all calculations, temperature vector will be 10 to the power of 5 minus 1.12 1.12. Here I am writing. The beside that matrix for identification, I am putting three four beside that matrix. After that, finding of temperature vectors. Next, finding the unknown nodal displacements here. Here, first of all, I am writing point loads where they are located. First of all. At node one, at node one, node one and node four are fixed, fixed elements. That means fixed uh, one, two, three. Given three elements, I am discretizing the three elements by four nodes. At node one zero, at node four zero, because of those two ends are fixed. For fixed nodes, I am taking zero. At node two, at node three. Here I am showing where the point loads are located. Let's see all of you. In this second node and third node, in second node and third node, point loads are given in uh, opposite. Direction, forward direction will be in right side. Opposite direction will be in left side. 60 kilo newton in second node, 75 kilo newton in third node. So for that reason, I'm taking at the node to minus. Why I'm taking minus means in the point load will be given in. Opposite direction. So for that reason, minus 60 into um, converting kilo newton into newton into 10 to the 10 cube newton. At node three, minus 75 10 cube newton. Node four, node one are zeros. 
because of fixed uh, points or fixed loads. After taking point loads, finding global load vector. That means finding the force vectors here. For finding force vectors, taking and summing of all forces like force vectors, temperature gradients, traction loads, point loads here. First of all, for finding F force vector, I'm taking for first node and for fourth nodes are zeros because of there are no point loads are acting. So I'm taking here temperature. Temperature vectors are theta denoted by theta. In previous slide, I'm showing theta, theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. Theta 1 will be minus 3.012. I'm denoting beside that it will be 1. So I'm taking minus 3.012 into 10 to the power of 5. It is the temperature vector for first node. Next, uh, coming to second node, my, my uh, first will be minus 1, 1, minus 3.012. Second, 3.012. 3.012 in temperature vector for first element. For second element, minus 1.54. I am including first temperature vector with the second element 3.012 minus 1.54 minus 0 0.60. Here minus 0 0.60. Why I am taking minus six, uh, 0 0.60 because of it is the point load. Point load it will be acting in second node okay at node 2 minus 16 to 10, uh, 10 to the power of 3 that means 10 q so i am taking minus 16 to 10 q as minus 0 0.60 into 10 to the power of 5 next same procedure for node 3 remaining 1.54 minus let's see all of you here 1.54 minus 1.12 point load acting at node 3 is minus 75 into 10 q so 1.54 minus 1.12 minus point load at node 3 is 75 minus 75 by because it is acting direction minus 0 0.75 into 10 to the power of 5 the remaining will be at uh, node 4, 1.12 into 10 to the power of 5. After doing the calculations, force vector will be 10 to the power of 5 taken as common, minus 3.012, 0 0.872, minus 0 0.33, 1.12. Beside that, I am taking similar as in previous slides, 1, 2, 3, 4. We know that finite element equation is kq equal to f or q will be taken as unknown nodal displacement it will be taken as q or u so here i am taking kq equal to f k is the stiffness matrix q is the nodal displacements f will be the force vectors we already know that the stiffness uh, global stiffness matrix after summing of all stiffness matrices K equal to K1, K2, K3. So here I am taking global stiffness matrix K. Q will be the Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. F will be the force vector. In previous, we found, we found F will be the number of 5 minus 0, 1, 2, 0 0.872 minus 0 0.33. Next 1.12. This is the formation of element stiffness matrix kq equal to f okay in this slide i am cross out elimination this is this elimination process 
here i am taking elimination approach second approach is also there penalty approach so for uh, easy removing of elements and nodal displacement i am taking elimination approach here so here i am cross outing q1 q4 rows and k1 k4 columns why because of in first slide we discuss about boundary conditions q1 q4 are zeros because of q1 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 q4 nodes are fixed elements that means fixed nodes because of that reason i am taking boundary condition q1 equal to q4 equal to zero for fixed nodes i am cross out the remaining terms will be 3.89 minus 1.4 minus 1.4 4.4 to q2 q3 equal to force vector remaining terms q2 q3 0.87 to minus 0.33 after doing all calculations and multiplication multiplications we found Q2, Q3 values here. It will it will be found easily by taking the values in Cassius in equation mode. Easy we easily found Q2, Q3 values. Q here global displacement vector. I am writing global displacement vector here. Q equal to zero. Q2, Q3 values are Q2 value is 0.223. Q3 value is minus 0.00415. Q1, Q4 are nodes. Q2, Q3 value taken here. After finding global displacement vectors, step six is the calculation of stresses and strains. For finding stresses and strains, the equation or the formula for finding stresses for stepped uh, step bar is sigma stress is denoted by sigma sigma equal to e into b minus alpha delta t e will be the inch modulus b is the 1 by length into minus 1 1 q is the nodal displacement alpha thermal diffusivity delta t is the therm temperature gradient Here, first of all, I am taking stress for first element. Sigma one is the E for first element, E one. That means E is E one. Eighty three giga Pascal, eighty three into ten to the power ten cube. Next, B will be written in one by length, one by L one. Length of first element is eight hundred one. Next, Q will be the Q of first element, Q one, Q two. Displacement vector for first element Q1 is zero, Q2 is 0.223. We found Q2 value recently. Q1, Q2. Next minus alpha of 18.2. After doing all calculations, sigma one is the One or two minus one or uh, one or two point three six six megapascals. Okay, it is the equation for finding stresses for various elements. Next, based on that, sigma two, sigma two means E of second element E two. E two means seventy into ten q minus B two. B two means one by L two. Length of second element one by six hundred. Minus one one. Next, here Q will be taken as Q two Q three. Q two Q three values are Q two is zero point two two three. Q three is zero point double zero four one five. Minus alpha into delta t. Alpha is twenty three into ten to the power of minus six into temperature gradient is eighty. Finding of 
sigma 2 doing of all calculations minus 155.28 megapascals. Sigma 3 is similar of a procedure for finding stresses here minus 185.2 megapascals. This is the procedure finding for finding stresses for various elements in step number. Next, solving for the support reactions. That means finding of reaction. Reactions here. K12, Q2 plus. First of all, I am writing for one four nodes are fixed here for finding support reactions. K12. That means here, first of all, I am taking stiffness matrix K1, Q2 plus K13, Q3. That will be related to force vector plus reaction forces. Next. K4, Q2 plus K4, Q3. In two equations, I am taking model displacements or displacement vectors like Q2, Q3s included here. In second equation, F4, R, R1. Remember that here I am taking force vector for first element. That means force vector for first node and force vector for fourth node. Because of, why? Because I am taking those two nodes because of Q1, Q4 or F1, F4 are fixed nodes. So I am calculating support reactions based on that vectors. Taking 10 power 5 Q2, Q3 values, K12 is the minus 2.49, next Q2 is 0 0.223 equal to F1 R1 plus F1 will be force vector for first node. 10 to the power of 5 as common minus 3.012. Taking all calculations R1 reaction per first node is 245.6 kilonewton. Next is similar to K42 value 4.4 into 10 to the power of 5 Q2 value is minus 0 0.00415 equal to minus F4 value will be 1.12 into 10 to the power of 5. After doing calculations, reaction forces per uh, node 4, R4 will be minus 113.2 kilonewton. Why? Because I'm calculating based on those only two nodes because of those are fixed elements or fixed nodes. 1, 2, 3 based on 1, 3 are fixed elements based on nodes 1, 4 are fixed nodes here. This is the simple problem on Triple bar is very important. 